The following podcast was produced by Big Head Amusements for KQEK.com. In part one of our conversation, composer Fabio Fritzi touched upon the Italian soundtrack industry during the 70s and 80s, the endurance of Italian film music, and Fritzi to Fulci, his upcoming Halloween concert at London's Union Chapel, presented by Death Waltz Records and Painted Black London. In the second half of our interview, Fritzi provides further details of his first ever London concert, working with legendary horror director Lucio Fulci, and the remarkable sound quality of Italian soundtrack albums as crafted by Italy's gifted sound engineers during the 70s and 80s. As fans of Italian soundtracks know, the engineering quality of many scores are incredibly warm, and uh, it's sort of a kind of a pure analog sound that I often find from these recordings that translated really well to, to CD. And I wonder if you have any thoughts on the recording and mixing engineers with whom you've worked past and present, since many Italian soundtracks remain, in my opinion anyway, sort of benchmarks uh, in audiophile quality. We had in Roma, in Italy, I agree with you, we had a great generation of sound engineers. In Roma, we had a big, um, a big um, company, was the RCA, the American one, uh, on Via Tiburtina, out of the town, and they had some students, some incredible studios. When I was really, really a baby, I mean, they, they did over there... Uh, some pop uh, and, and, and many other things, but also great uh, American musicians came uh, here to record uh, uh, soundtracks uh, like Harry Mancini and, and others. And uh, in, the, in this place, uh, there was uh, like a school, I mean, uh, there were young uh, uh, sound engineers and they came from there. And then after they went uh, everywhere in Roma to record. And uh, you have to know that uh, um, Italy is not so big like uh, Canada or United States, but uh, it's long. And when we have uh, two great towns for music, one is Roma, the other is Milan. In Milan, we had, uh, most, most of all, we had uh, some um, pop, rock, uh, let's say, r- record uh, music. Uh, um, in Roma, uh, all uh, we, we had recorded in Italy about uh, soundtrack was always in Roma. And uh, uh, when I began, uh, there, there were those uh, in, incredible persons. I can just uh, tell some names. Uh, I began with uh, Giorgio Agazzi. Giorgio Agazzi came also for, from RCA, and he was in the, the studio called, uh, in this time, uh, Orthophonic, uh, where Morricone used to record, or where uh, Piero Piccioni and uh, Armando Trovaioli. And I was young, and I was so happy to, to be there. And Giorgio was one of my best friends. And I think that uh, the, the clean of his, uh, his work was uh, incredible. And then uh, another was uh, Franco Patrignani, and another one that I remember was uh, Pino Mastroianni. Pino Mastroianni was in a studio, not, not the biggest in Roma, called uh, Sony. Um, not Sony, but Sonic, Sonic, S-O-N-I-C. And uh, he, he recorded, for example, The Beyond. That, that he was, it was not an easy recording because there was the orchestra, there were keyboards, there were chorus, everything. And uh, Pino was, was, was terrible, it was so perfect. My, my melodron, I, I, I used to play melodron on the chorus. Um, they had this enormous passion, and I think maybe an Italian uh, quality is, uh, is the creativity, and uh, they, they were very helpful for us, but for all of us, and I, and, I'm so happy that you, you, uh, you, you dig, you understand, uh, and you feel uh, that there was something uh, special in this uh, moment uh, of sound. Oh yeah, because I, I find that when a lot of the scores are released, either from the 70s, the 80s, or the early 90s, and 
even for the first time that I listened to them, I'm just amazed by the clarity uh, that you could hear yeah. all the instruments and everything is like it. I think the engineering basically brings out the beauty of a lot of your orchestrations and a lot of the way that everything's been so neatly arranged and uh, it's 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 really striking and I imagine that when these albums are released or reissued on CD yeah. um, I'm sure that contemporary engineers when they listen to them for the first time they just go my god like this, this is perfect <laughs> I don't have to do anything you know the, the I think that the the, the, the growth of uh, technology uh, maybe has uh, changed maybe too much um, because uh, the, the the warmth of uh, the the analogic recording is uh, sure uh, so different. I mean, nowadays you can uh, uh, you can record uh, in your bathroom. I mean, <laughs> you can take a, a computer and uh, the ideas can flow. But uh, it's also not so easy to put the sounds together because every sound of uh, what came from a computer or, or keyboard or, or sampler are according to me, so similar, so great, so, so it's not easy to cut and to, to put together. My actual uh, sound engineer is a, like, a, like a brother for me, it's uh, almost 20 years we work together and he will be in London to help us to, to do the best, he's called uh, Giuseppe Meddi. We, we, we usually work now with uh, a little piece of orchestra and a lot of other sounds. But I see that every time is a uh, is not so old, but it comes from the old school. I mean, and he always uh, is trying to create uh, um, uh, breaks between a sound and another sound to make them live together. And the thing that uh, now is maybe the problem is that you can put everything on the, on, on on a project, and at last you cannot hear anything. Last week we were recording something for a, a new movie, and he told me, "No, Fabio, don't put a, this, this other thing because otherwise you cannot uh, hear the coro, the, the voices." And uh, I, I can listen to him and say, "Okay, okay, stop." Then, then the, the, this old school was uh, too clear because in this time they had studied only the real instrumental sounds, and they knew how to put them together. That's a really interesting point to make, um, because so much today basically can either be manufactured or sampled, and you can buy entire libraries of, of yeah. sounds and create an orchestra. Okay. And I guess that sort of brings me then to my next question, where the technology that you've used, obviously, to compose, to create mock-ups and demos for directors, it's changed in the last 30 years. And for yourself, I wonder if these changes, where it went from analog to digital, um, and the use of digital workstations, were they helpful for you in expressing your ideas, especially in horror, or did they make things a little bit more complicated at times? I think that everything that I have met in my, in my, in my working experience uh, were um, uh, means of expression. I mean, uh, we started when I was very young with my maestro who taught me, with a, a piece of paper, no writing. But uh, still today, I begin with a little piece of paper for the first idea. So then you have this uh, this enormous uh, possibility of, of working. I think that uh, every every sound you you have, and today you have, uh, as you are telling, uh, the possibility of of, uh, of using every everything, almost everything. Um, but. Uh, um, maybe the most uh, the, the, the most uh, difficult thing in this moment is to choose. If you have the right the, the right ideas, the cl clear ideas, you can uh, work more easily. But uh, if uh, tomorrow someone asks you to work uh, a, a low budget movie with a, a string quartet, you have to uh, know how to do also with this. Yeah, I think is. Uh, this is the our the beauty of our work. Um, you enjoyed a, a very lengthy association with Lucio Fulci, uh, both in horror and in his westerns. And I wonder if there were any skills that Fulci helped you refine, if not any lessons that you learned, which proved very valuable in scoring movies, both for Fulci and for other filmmakers. Uh, Lucio was uh, 
was a teacher. I mean, uh, he, Fulci was a, a person who loved so much the the show in, in every in, in every direction. Who knew, I think, very well uh, how, how to do with with, um, with every kind of, of possibilities of, of budgets. The thing that I learned uh, basically from from Lucio and from others, but Lucio was very important, was uh, that. Uh, if the uh, director has an idea uh, of, of the movie, uh, you, you a musician, have to follow this idea. You have to, to understand the, the last uh, frame, what he wants to say. With, with the, uh, and, uh, and it's quite difficult to understand. That when you are young, you think that uh, the most important thing is to write a good uh, song, a good, a good theme. This is uh, true. Still, a certain point. I mean, uh, if you cannot write uh, good music, you you have to do another job. And then uh, my last question is just: uh, Will there be a recording, either on audio or video, of the London Halloween concert, so that fans who are unable to attend will have a chance to enjoy what seems to be planned as a very intimate and wonderful musical performance? Uh, obviously, uh, we have a lot of ideas and. Uh, let's say other projects about this project because uh, sure we we record the the, the London concert uh, on audio because uh, we want uh, next year to have a double um, a double release uh, there are the long suites about any um, every movie almost every movie and we have also other projects uh, about this DVD but um, we are planning. I, sure, I want uh, to 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 make Fritzi to Fulci be, become something uh, that uh, remains in my story in in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a strong way. And obvi- obviously, we are planning uh, maybe next year. In these uh, days, uh, there are my friends uh, Goblin, who, who are going around uh, in the States, in Canada. And uh, I would like really to, to bring this project, this project uh, over there and have my friends over there to listen directly with me. Fabio Fritzi's London debut, Fritzi de Fulci, takes place October 31st at Union Chapel. The concert is a presentation of Death Waltz Records and Painted Black London. For related film and film music reviews, please visit kqek.com or its mobile edition at kqek.com mobile. Additional podcasts and media materials can be found at bigheadamusements.com. This program is copyright 2013 by Mark R. Hassan.